by voice vote or otherwise without debate or research at an American Optometric Association convention. Uh, he found that because optom this one optometrist took uh, a course and uses a medical test of HGN, which Dr. Cytek himself admits is different than the police test, that that somehow translates into a police officer's use of a police technique. Dr. Cytek, the state's proponent, if you will, admits he's never actually even taken or passed the police course for their actual police administered test. He admits that his medical test is different than the police test. Uh, that translation by Judge Brandt, I feel, is a bit of a, uh, is a bit disingenuous because they're two, apparently two different techniques. Dr. Citron, the board certified ophthalmologist, he testified that he gives an HGN test which also is different than the police administered test and that his test is only acceptable in a medical community to establish a possible central nervous uh, depression or illness which could be up to 200 plus causes, only one of which is alcohol. So now we have in Judge Brandt's ruling uh, the logic that because there's a medical HGN test that they use with all the training behind them uh, as ophthalmologists or optometrists that that test can translate into a variant employed by police to uh, designate a cause as solely alcohol by officers who do not necessarily have college degrees, certainly are unlikely to have attended and successfully completed an optometry school, certainly are not doctors or ophthalmologists, and the bottom line is have attended at best a 24-hour course which according to the testimony perhaps three hours is devoted to an HGN training and perhaps up to four questions on HGN are placed on a 20-question test what about is the, HGN. What is the N HTSA standard? Pardon? The NHTSA standards. Yes. What, what are those? The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration standardized HGN test is a very specific six or eight part test which if completely and strictly complied with according to NHTSA, if I may refer to them as such, will allow for uh, the possibility of proof of impairment. Now statistical research that's actually been performed on that has proven that a failure of that test correlates to a BAC or blood alcohol concentration level of approximately 0 .04, half our legal limit. Four clues out of six translates to a 0 .04. Across the board, all the experts agree to that. Yet police officers, and a 0 .04 in Illinois law, 0 .05 or less is presumed innocent of DUI. 0.08 being the legal limit. So the, the failure to perform that test by this officer is a basis for your uh, saying that his testimony should be inadmissible? Uh, frankly, Justice, Officer Klatt is the poster boy for why the police administered tests should remain inadmissible. It's a systemic failure across the board, not only in the training of the officers, three hours, six hours, four questions, even if they get all of them wrong, if they get the other 16 questions right on the other field tests, they are considered certified and experts in HGN for the rest of their lives. The training system, Counselor. which I don't think you can separate, is deficient. Isn't the, I'm sorry. Isn't the state position that uh, this argument has been forfeited? Uh, yes, they did say so. However, if you return to the appellate decision where the, the uh, decision that was presented to your honors before McCown won, it's specifically in that decision that the uh, defendant raised not only the issue of Fry, 
but the issue of foundation for the admissibility of the test, even in the absence of Fry. Um, so when it was appealed, the state, I believe, is erroneous in stating that this issue was never raised in the trial court or in the appellate court. Um, I would point out that on page 8 of the Rule 23 opinion, which would also be referred to as A-19 of the original brief and argument for the defendant before this court, uh, the appellate court indicates the defendant's third contention on appeal is that the trial court erred when it allowed Clatt, the office, to testify about the results of the HGN test. If, if we should find the officer's testimony is inadmissible uh, at retrial, what about double jeopardy? Frankly, this was the only basis that the trial court in her findings relied upon uh, to find that the defendant was in fact impaired. This is a case where the person was brought to the hospital. There were no field sobriety tests. It would be, uh, I would say, a difficult leap to stretch so far as to say the remaining evidence proved impairment beyond a reasonable doubt. I believe that's something that uh, certainly must be addressed. Uh, equally true we when we talk... We did have slurred, slurred speaking and alcohol on the breath when the officer went to the hospital. Honestly, I don't recall so, the slurred so, speech, um, but... Uh, the person was in a hospital bed, and the officer himself testified that he did not form the opinion that the person was under the influence of alcohol until after he gave the HGN test and that he relied upon it in formulating that opinion. Uh, whether that needs to be fleshed out or remanded, it's our position the remaining evidence was insufficient. But again, the case, the case is on its facts. It's not about whether some obtuse HGN test in a medical hospital, in an optometrist's office, or in ophthalmology passes the Fry standard. It's whether the test in this case that was performed is this brings me back to my original, my original question. 